Okay, questions? Well, anyway, I'm very connected with the Korean government. And uh, Korea is very, very aggressive in this area. And uh, let's say Seoul National University, Korea University, all these different schools are looking for teams to work with. And so what I'm basically doing is putting together marriages between American hospitals and Korean hospitals and American technology and Korean technology. And so there's really a, a funding is never a problem so long as the science is there. So Let's talk. I'd like to talk to you about it. Sure. Ralph is with the uh, tool set that you guys have designed, um, the basic structures are pretty simple. And uh, it, rather than having to attach them to the Empire State Building to get positional synthesis and so forth, it seems that you might be able to make those tools as they are, just as monomers, and just throw them into a bucket with reagents and demonstrate that they do what they're supposed to do. Uh, are you planning to pursue that pathway? Um, probably not. Basically what you're saying is, gee, we could synthesize some of those and demonstrate the chemical reactions at a higher level of confidence than we can get using the computational chemistry. And probably what will happen, I mean, it, it's possible things will move in that direction, but my expectation would be probably that we'll be talking with folks who are involved in scanning probe microscopes and they would attempt to glue some of these tools onto a tip and move around. So the comment, for any of you who missed it, the comment about the Empire State Building comes from a famous description of a scanning probe microscope, which is a scanning probe microscope, uh, or arranging atoms with a scanning probe microscope, is somewhat like moving basketballs on a basketball court by using the Empire State Building upside down to push things around. And uh, as a consequence, if you're using standard scanning probe microscopy equipment, you have this very large hunk of equipment which eventually focuses down on this very small atom. But yes, the idea of uh, validating the, the reactions by using various forms of chemical techniques would be quite interesting, and obviously it would eliminate uh, the residual uncertainty involved <clears throat> in, you know, does the specific reaction work? Other questions? I just have a bit of a comment more than a question. And your uh, Formala site needing a network in order to establish its variables in the mm -hmm. body, regenerating uh, amphibians tend to de differentiate adult cells. Oh, okay. So uh, regenerating a animals, uh, cells de differentiate at the point of injury, and then they recapitulate the development process. And David Gardner at UC Irvine has shown that fib fibroblasts or fibroblasts. Um, have some positional information within the biology which indicate to the cells at the point of injury what they're supposed to turn into. So that may be a, a way to get that done without having to put yeah. a whole network in. So there are biological mechanisms which allow you to have some idea of where you are and sort of the obvious question is could we take advantage of those biological mechanisms to also ascertain where we are? And the answer is I don't know. But it might well be possible uh, I'm a little more comfortable coming from an electrical engineering background, thinking about you know acoustic signals and measuring delay times and you know a GPS-like system. But obviously, there are a range of possibilities that open up. So all I'm confident of saying is capabilities like this are going to be developed, and this approach is feasible. Whether or not this approach turns out to be the exact approach that's taken, or whether we adopt some other techniques and use those, a little bit harder to say at this point in time. But good observation. I have a question, uh, just came up, and it's kind of whimsical, but also maybe have all of you all or anyone thought of, if we accomplish all this, what if, will we be able to die if we want to? <laughs> I, I, I've never viewed that as a, a you know, how do I put it? I've never viewed that as a, a, a constraint on my available options, but, but uh, I, I would expect uh, that, that it would be possible to take some action that, that would, you know, end it all if that was, was the desired outcome. Yeah. That's, that's. Okay, so we have, let's do one more question so we can actually get an early uh, out here. One more burning, okay, Greg. 
Uh, Ralph, I, I understand uh, that uh, there was a large uh, grant related to nanotechnology uh, in the UK recently. Yes. Could you comment a little bit about that and how that relates to the track that you two guys are on? So basically, we were talking a couple of years ago, Rob was in detailed conversation with Phil Moriarty, who is a research scientist at University of Nottingham and a faculty member who decided, <clears throat> after being persuaded by seeing an early draft of our minimal tool set paper, that, yeah, this stuff looks interesting. And we, of course, regarded that as a good indication. Previously, when we described these goals and we described these capabilities, the response of most experimentalists is, oh, that's fascinating. Come back when there's something I can do. And this time, the response was, oh, that's fast. Uh, gee, I might be able to do that. So he applied for a grant and received it. So he got three million bucks for a five-year grant to try and do some of the reactions involved in mechanosynthesis. And he's chugging along. Um, I gather he's got uh, some of his equipment there and is shaking it down and getting it to work, which is all very difficult. It's always slower than expected when you actually have to do something in the lab. So there's a certain amount of frustration in, in dealing with all of these things. And we'll see how it works out. Thank you, gentlemen. Okay.